This is the 5Z06 I've had for about a year and a half now, and I feel like I've worked on it more than I've actually driven it. Between swapping out the engine and rebuilding the transmission, uh, after all that was complete, I still wasn't able to drive it due to clutch issues. Hopefully today we could solve that with replacing the master cylinder with a tick performance master cylinder that's adjustable that will allow me to have a little more throw in the throw out bearing and completely release the clutch so I can uh, switch into first and reverse gears. When switching to an aftermarket clutch in a C5 and C6 Corvette, it's fairly common to have release issues due to the fact that the stock master cylinder is fairly weak and can't fully release the clutch properly. So this Tickmaster cylinder is a great upgrade for anybody that's dealing with first reverse lockout issues, high RPM lockouts. So hopefully this solves all of my problems and I can finally get to driving the car and actually enjoying it. I've seen a lot of Corvettes with blown transmissions and I feel like the main reason is the stock GM clutch hydraulics just can't keep up with more aggressive driving. So in stock form, that slave cylinder just isn't releasing completely and it doesn't stop the drive shaft from spinning completely. And this puts a lot of stress on the synchros inside the transmission because anytime that transmission, the input shaft is moving while you're shifting gears, um, it just a lot of extra wear and tear on those synchros that's not necessary. So this Tick Performance Master Cylinder um, increases that clutch line pressure quite a bit from stock and allows it to uh, push further on the clutch fingers, like in the animation here, and it allows that uh, drive shaft to stop spinning in between gear changes. The other added benefit is it has an adjustable linkage that attaches to the pedal, and that adjustment you can change you know, how much throw there is on that uh, slave cylinder and how much it takes to actually release the clutch because every clutch is going to be different and as clutch is where it's going to take more or less uh, pressure to uh, release that clutch. So I don't actually have the new master cylinder yet. So in the meantime, what I'm going to do is take the old one out. And there's two ways of doing this. You can either try to disconnect this quick disconnect fitting. That's like way down in there in between first and then uh, take out the master or you could do it the flip way. I'm going to take out my slave cylinder first, drop it down below, have everything hang and then I can get to that quick disconnect a lot easier. Um, it's pretty much like this kind of quick disconnect where you push uh, a tool inside of there, press uh, forward, and then it releases. Um, but that's gonna be hard to do, um, especially because I have aftermarket headers and you can see my clutch line is like shoved way down in there. So hoping that I could take the slave out first and it'll alleviate that issue. All right, so anybody that wants to do this job at home, Seems fairly simple to do it this way. Um, all I had to do was disconnect. There's a little push rod that goes to the pedal underneath there. Just disconnect that. And then you just have to turn the master cylinder uh, like 45 degrees towards the inside of the car, so towards the engine, and it just pulls right out. And then what I did here was there's a little press pin that you can punch out um, and that disconnects the line going down to the clutch area. And then you should be able to pull this uh, master cylinder out. I'm just letting it drain right now into a pan. So with that line disconnected like that, I should be able to pull it through to the bottom and just let that whole line hang. And that way I can get to that uh, quick disconnect piece and be able to separate that a little bit easier. Okay, so here's that clutch line hanging out of the bottom of the car. I just kind of fished it down through. And then here you can see that quick disconnect. It's a lot easier to just like separate that first and then just sort of pull it down. That way you can get to this because it's a pain. You really have to hold it with two hands while you're pushing that little green piece in. 
and then um, pushing in on the line at the same time. So you gotta hold everything and then it should disconnect. Watch another video where someone spent like two hours just try trying to disconnect that line. And really that's the main reason because you need to pull that down to get access to it. The tick performance instructions, I don't think mention that you should probably uh, disconnect that line first and feed it down through. So that's a good pro tip to save you time. There's our old master cylinder. The entire thing is just made out of plastic. And this rod on the new one, you'll see it is adjustable. And actually, whoa, that's interesting. The rod on mine is actually bent a tiny bit. So uh, yeah, that probably was not helping things. Yeah, see that slight bend in there right here. So yeah, I'm pretty sure that's probably why uh, the uh, clutch wasn't releasing all the way. Here's the new master cylinder and you have to actually drill two holes in the back of your clutch pedal assembly. Uh, so I did that. They give you a little template where to drill. Make sure you drill exactly because I ended up drilling slightly in the wrong spot and it didn't screw in. And I had to use a little burr tool here to uh, oval out the holes to get that to fit correctly. So it's in there now and I uh, put the rod in there. It didn't completely attach it yet, but you can see how this is adjustable and has threads. So the longer this rod is, the more it's gonna push fluid and uh, depress that clutch uh, further. So they tell you not to adjust it too far because you can actually break the pressure plate in your clutch with this new setup. So you just kind of go with the smallest length, do a little bit at a time and see where the clutch actually releases properly and then you're good to go. So this assembly has to go back in the car and then this new clutch line has to go in. It's nice they uh, added some heat sleeving to it. <clears throat> and then this is the quick disconnect tool for taking the old clutch line off. If you uh, take this and the one that's already attached on there, you kind of just put this in between here and then press up like that and it pushes on this plastic piece, releasing the fingers and then you can get the old clutch line off. All right, everything's back together and in the car. I just need to fill up the reservoir and then I already have a extended clutch bleed line. I'm actually gonna tuck that up underneath into the torque tube shield once I'm done with that, but I can easily bleed the clutch from there. And uh, that should be pretty much it. And then I do need to do a little bit of adjustment um, with that heim joint, the length of it, um, but that's only once the clutch is bled. Basically, I'm gonna put the car in the air and then figure out the, out the point where um, it's in gear, you have your foot on the clutch and the back wheels don't spin anymore. That's how you know it's properly adjusted. So uh, let's bleed the clutch and then we should be good to go. All right, so I got the heim joint uh, adjusted for the clutch pedal and first gear and reverse engage properly now. And I don't have the issue anymore where when the car heats up, it uh, doesn't want to go in gear. So success. So we're going to drive around for a little bit longer and do some like higher RPM shifting to make sure it doesn't grind or the clutch releases at the higher RPMs too. <laughs>
trended forth a little bit, so I think I have to just adjust it a tiny bit because I was like a 7,000 RPM shift. So the car is 100% fixed, and uh, if you guys have any clutch issues or trying to get into first reverse or grinding at you know high speed or high rpm shifts uh, make sure to check out the tick performance master cylinder i know this is a long video but it really explained in depth of what this upgrade did uh, one thing to keep in mind is the pedal effort is definitely increased because it's a bigger bore master cylinder um, I think they said it was like a 60% increase in stiffness over a stock pedal feel. Um, didn't really, I mean, I came from driving cars with more aggressive clutches and that's kind of what it felt like. It felt like just driving a car with a, like a, a puck style clutch and heavy pressure plate. So I'd rather have that feeling than a mushy pedal and knowing that you know the the slave cylinder might not be pushing in all the way and engaging the clutch pro properly so uh, with that being said let me know in the comments if you guys have any questions um, but even in a stock car i would definitely look into this upgrade because it could save your transmission and synchros